I've been busy this morning. Uh, I just wanted to finish off all these like little projects. Um, I've got a lot to sort of finish and varnish uh, at the moment um, if I want to use it. So I've uh, been quite busy sort of getting these oars and this uh, uh, new boat hook uh, done. So the first thing I'll show you is the boat hook. Uh, this was my existing paddle. <laughs> and I thought I didn't want to waste it. It's really well varnished. So I actually, uh, <clears throat> I've done some um, videos on creating the, the boat hook. Um, and what I've done is I had to re-glue this because it split. It was quite good, but I've just given it a epoxy plastic sort of coating. I also coated this nail as well, which should hopefully help stop that corroding. And I've given it a good test and it's really quite strong. So there was quite a gap in here. So I just filled it with this epoxy plastic. Um, which re hardens really hard. It sands quite well as well if you want to just tidy it up. Um, and that's my boat hook finished. So I can clip that. I can take that down to the, the mirror dinghy straight away and start using it. It would be quite useful docking and things like that. When you're sort of mooring up to a mooring, um, it's uh, when you're sailing, it can be quite tricky to do that on your own. Uh, so that will really help, grabbing ropes off the boat, all kinds of stuff. I'm sure the boat hook will be quite useful. And then the oar, uh, let me just be careful with that. I've actually done the same with the oar. So this gap, because my sawing of the, of the groove was obviously a little bit amateur, I did put some epoxy in here. Uh, that I, I still had left over, but I, I filled it with this plastic as well. So this is done. I only did it this morning. It, um, it dries really quickly. That is really solid all along here. So all I need to do now is give that a good old sand and then that'll be ready for varnishing. Uh, on the other end, I've also got this, uh, I've just used the uh, Dremel to to, to curve that off. I don't I need to just do a little bit more of that. It took took its time. Just need to sand that so it's nice and round. So I've got, you know, it's nice and easy to use. If it's square, um, then it's quite sharp on your hand and it gives you blisters. So just make sure that's smooth and that'll be ready for um, sanding. I've just got this um, Easy Flow 60 PU casting resin. Um, and I've noticed it's really hard. It sands quite well. So I thought I'd use that. It does dry white, which isn't perfect, but you know, it does a good job. So I've done the other all with it. Um, and I'm gonna now show you how I do it uh, on this all. I've already, let's see if we can see, I've already sellotaped under here. So we should be able to pour into the top on both sides. Um, and uh, it shouldn't come out the bottom. If it does, it'll only be uh, a little bit. And you can see this uh, is quite runny, which is really good because you can get it down loads of cracks and crevices. Whoopsie. So let's just tidy it up a little bit there. I'm hoping once you've sanded it, you should be able to varnish over the top of this. I mean, it is pretty much just epoxy. It's a resin. Um, so I'm hoping it it is okay to do that. Here's my oars. Let's just move the uh, paddles out of the way. Oop. So there's my oars. They need to touch up. The varnish is all gone here the bottom there and you can see they've got a little bit of staining but they're in pretty good nick I'm going to give them a sand and I'm also going to sand the paddles today as well get those finished here's one all done I've just um, wiped it down so it's a little bit patchy but you can see I got rid of most of this black stuff that was there it's a little bit up here that I, had, I couldn't really get rid of but I'm just going to treat it and varnish it and it should last a fair few years just got this one to do 
and then we're done. Here's the paddles. They're all done, all sanded down, treated, and ready to rock and roll, I think these are. I'm really excited to try and get one of these done at least, so I can try it out on the dinghy. Looking really good. There's the first door with its first coat of new varnish on, uh, thinned down, um, about 10-15%. I use this stuff, the International Original, seems to really do a great job, so never had cause for complaint. First coat of varnish is on. I hope it doesn't dry too quickly in the sun, um, but they're looking really good. They're gonna, you know, the idea of this was that they would just last a lot longer. It doesn't matter roughly what it looks like. Here are the ore locks. You can see I've started cleaning this one up already. That's the, how they were. Um, I did this with the Dremel, actually, just with the, you get a little bit of polish with the Dremel. It kind of did an okay job, but, um, I'm going to actually use my old friend Autosol, which I use for pretty much everything metal. It's really good. I think it's better than Brasso um, when doing this. Um, and you literally, you just rub a little bit on. I'm trying to find a little piece I haven't done. Maybe this, oh, I've got a little bit of varnish on here. So I don't think this will get the varnish off. But you can see just with a little like you get a lovely shiny uh let's do a little bit on here so we can yeah it's really nice really shiny that make these look really beautiful i might even get the dremel and use the polishing wheel i've got on there i've also got some screws so these replace ones that go in the side they look about right i hope they're right and these ones go in the top so they'll just look a little bit a little bit better once we've polished everything up. So two coats of primer are on. You can see I've done it right under there. Looking quite good. We had a day of rain yesterday, literally all day, so I had it under cover. It's nice and dry. We're gonna put the uh, undercoat on next. Um, what I wanna do is make some ore sleeves because uh, ore sleeves are either really expensive, hard to get, or um, they're the ones that, that, that go on, they sort of slip on, you have to heat them up somehow, slip them on, and then they stick there, and if you get it wrong, you can't actually adjust them. Now, I, I don't know, I don't know um, where the heck these ore sleeves need to go, so I'm gonna make at least a little ring lock, that I've made already, I've 3D printed it, to at least see where the oars sort of, where the oar locks need to go. But I'm gonna do the little ring lock like this, and I'm gonna screw that through, and then the other side, I've got, um, I don't know what you call these, threaded inserts, they're called. What you do, you melt these into the plastic, and you create a, a thread and I've got another screw here that then this screw will go in. Now, I don't know how much pull out force these things will, will, will be able to do, but we're gonna find out. It's not much because you can see the amount of force I need just to push that like that isn't much. So I'm gonna try and get this hole sorted. I'm gonna get a little thread lock in, in melted in there and then we'll see if we can do a bit of testing on the oar. And all you do with these is you put it over the hole. Uh, immediately I can see this isn't really gonna be big enough. And then you just heat it up. And you should see it suddenly melt. There we go. And it goes into the hole. But I've got a slight problem here because I've not made my hole anything like big enough. So um, I'm gonna have to try and get that plastic out of there without, uh, upsetting the rest of it, just out the middle, otherwise, it, otherwise I can't. Actually, that's done a good job of it. So it's not pretty, this one, 
but when that sets you'll see I've got a thread now in the other side this will now go through here so let me just get a screwdriver for that there we go let's just get a screwdriver because that's quite tight let's just move that out of the way and you'll see that screws through if we now get rid of these pliers the PLA should set quite quickly actually so I don't want to do it a little bit early but that the idea is now that will go around the ore lock and then you can you can actually tighten that up so I got a shorter screw as you can see slightly shorter that's brilliant and now we're just going to pop that on here I mean I'm going to do it you wouldn't normally fit it at, at this height but I'm just going to do it here to test it so it still spins a little the fear was that there'd be too much tensile strength on this and it will eventually just pull it out but you know we're going to see so that's not spinning you can spin it but it's good enough I've just soldered these little uh, grommets in it's so difficult to do them without knocking the camera over etc um, you'll notice that I've doubled the width of this collar so that was the old one yeah there or this one um, I've doubled the width of the collar so that should give us uh, two screws which will share the load so I'm gonna do another one of these put it on the oars put them on the oars when I go on the condor the first time and then we'll see if they work so the varnish is dry ready for the next coat um, it's a little bit rough because I thinned this varnish down so it would soak into the wood and that has the effect of just bringing the grain up a little bit so I'm just gonna I've only got 240 you really need 320 or 240 grit give it a very light sand just to smooth it down and even that's done it just to smooth it down and then we put the second coat on